Good morning. You've heard me say it before, often when I read scripture, I just ask God as I'm reading it, preparing for a homily in particular, what is just a practical point to make to help us grow closer to Almighty God and also to one another? The first reading, today I'm going to focus on the first reading and the gospel. Three thoughts. In the first reading, where do you find Elijah? He's up on top of a mountain. He's at a mountain, okay? It's a quiet place, close to God, nothing to interfere. And Elijah, in Old Testament mentality, knew that God had spoken to people uh, on mountains. Moses is probably the best example. Moses went up on Mount Sinai and he received the Ten Commandments and conversed with God for a long while. Even today's gospel had Jesus up on a mountain and Jesus, when he was transfigured, glorified, where was he? He was up on the mountain. God the Father was talking to him and he was talking back. So a mountain is a great place to pray and the problem here in Indiana is we don't have a lot of mountains to climb up on and to pray at. And so a simple thought this morning is just ask yourself right now, where do I find a good place to pray that's quiet, away from cell phones, everything else, they don't work up on the mountains, away from everything else. Just think about that right now. Where do, where do I find a good place to pray in my life, individually, each one of us? Because we need to find that time to converse with Almighty God. He truly loves us. Right here in church is a good place. We have the Word of God, we have Scripture, we have one another, and it is good to pray with one another. For myself, I find the Blessed Sacrament is one of my favorite places to pray, the quiet of the church, the, blessed, the, the living Lord right there. But again, just to reemphasize, where do I find during the week, where do I find a place to pray? Second little thought. God can speak to us in many different ways. Elijah, Old Testament, what he was expecting was, he thought God was going to speak to him through uh, the fire, through the earthquake, through the raging wind, things like that. That was sort of Old Testament mentality. God, God would use nature to speak, he, he'd speak through nature in different ways. But then, in that first reading, God did something entirely different that Elijah wasn't expecting. God spoke to Elijah in his tiny whispering voice, sort of tapping on the heart of Elijah. And basically, I have to believe God is saying, I am here and I love you. Will you listen to me? And the simple thought from this, from this part of the, of, the, of the Old Testament reading is the reality, when I find that place to pray, do I really expect God to talk to me? Do I really expect that God can come down and tap me on the heart and I can just know without any doubt that this God is present here and he is talking to me and he is saying, I love you. Sinfulness, no sin, whatever you're doing, I love you, I'm your God. So from Elijah, where is a good place to pray? And when we pray, expect God to speak and to tap us on the heart. Let's go to the gospel. You got Peter. And you got Jesus walking on the water toward Peter or toward the boat. And Jesus says to Peter, come to me. God says that to every one of us, come to me. And Peter has to, has to respond, do I do it or not? He's in a boat, he has to walk on water. And Peter probably is hindered to coming to the Lord, as most of us are. Number one, he was probably a bit fearful. I gotta walk on water. That's, that's, that's a, good, a good trick. There probably was for him still unbelief. Why should I believe this guy who's walking on water toward me? The other thing is, he didn't have much support, which is true in our faith also today in our culture. Everybody else is still in the boat. Nobody else wanted to jump in, but Peter did. And then when he jumped in, what happened? Remember, this guy was a fisherman. He knew, he knew that lake well. 
he probably knew how deep it was where he's jumping in and walking on water initially, but he begins to sink. And he was no dummy. He knew, I'm going to drown. And the gospel is so beautiful. What does he do? He cries out to Jesus, help me, Lord. And Jesus reaches out and picks him up. Most of us have a hard time coming to Jesus. Although at every moment, I believe in somehow way or other, God is calling us to come to him. But every one of us have a hard time doing it, much like Peter. It could be because of our sins. It could be because of sinful culture. It could be because of distractions. It could just be done through busyness of life. But we know God is calling us to come to him. When we find it difficult, today's gospel just reminds me when I find it difficult to really grow in, grow in following the Lord and coming to him, I just have to do what Peter did. Lord, help me. I am stuck in the mud. I'm not growing. I need your help. And to believe that in some way, Jesus will reach out and help us. As we go on with Mass, may we ask Elijah and Peter to help us. Again, to ask the question, where is a good place for me to pray? And when I pray, do I truly expect Jesus to tap my heart? And when I'm frustrated, do I have the courage to cry out, help me, Lord? Let's try to live this out as this week continues.